Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's a good part, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Everybody, I would like to welcome you to our 101st episode. We're at 11 t one No, we're 10 t one 10 t one 10 titty one Titty one I think You're the titty one. I'm the titty one. Why, yeah, he is. Oh, wait, hold on a second, guys. Wait, am I doing the thing? I forgot to start the video. Hi, video. Uh, wait, dude, did, did the titty one. I'm the titty one. It was Jeff's titties that made me think about the video. Yes, titties. right. Yeah. Listen to them. So this is part two of John Borman's 1970 script for Lord of the Rings that for reasons unknown never got made. I don't see you. I, don't I mean, see it's a fantastic script. I don't know why. They're, they're kind of railroading this guy. Yeah. I mean, psh. Fucking this, this guy guy's over. a fucking architect. He put this shit together. Like the the, the other guy is the architect. The, oh, com- I don't the know. complexity of Bill Bodo when he's going. Bill Bodo. Ring- Did what? you say Bill Bodo? Yeah, yeah. the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both basically the same fucking character that just took place five pages apart. <laughs> he's like, "Give me the ring." Okay, oh, and I, the guy's like, um, I got the ring. Uh, I have the ring. I don't want the ring. I want the ring. Put it on my dick. Take this ring. I want the ring. Okay. That could have been the same fucking character. Yeah. It could have just been the one. Why didn't you send it with the old guy? If the young guy's just going that way, you just send it with the fucking old dude. Frodo Bilbo. Frodo Bo. Frodo Bo. <laughs> Frodo Bo. Bill Bodo. <laughs> you already know though. Ah. Bill Bodo shot first. That's it. Previously on Table Readers. <laughs> so we started much in the same way as the Peter Jackson film, but with all context, information, and characterization removed. We get a look at the entirety of Mill Earth, starting from Mordor and going all the way to the Shire, where Bilbo's 111st birthday is underway. He heads off to Rivendell, and then Frodo heads off with Mary, Pippin, and Sam roughly 20 minutes later for reasons we never learn and neither do they. So far, here's what we know about who each character is. <laughs> when we left off, <laughs> the great. four habit, the four hobbits, not Bilbo as we can safely assume that his 20-minute head start gives the 111-year-old hobbit an insurmountable insurmountable lead uh, are walking the countryside with no idea whatsoever that they are in danger because Gandalf literally Never told them they were in any. Fade in. Exterior. High open countryside and lane. Day. A dusty lane crosses the brow of a hill and the four hobbits trudge across it. The shadow of a cloud scurries over the sunlit fields. The cloud is the new bad guy. (gasps) <gasps> Not second man? Ah. Ah. What it is to be a cloud. <laughs> wow. In the distance, the hobbits see a flurry of dust. That's the new bad guy. Coming towards them. <laughs> Just <every time. laughs> they hurry off the lane and push through the hedge like rabbits. A rider thunders towards them. They keep their heads well down and peer through the hedgerow flowers where bees and butterflies suck and flutter. (laughs) What the fuck? That's a good description of porn. (laughs) Suck and flutter. Let me tell you about the birds and the bees. They're sucking. There's fluttering. Welcome back to suckandflutter.com. And then the black rider comes in and ruins everything. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you about the black riders. (laughs) When you're trying to suck and flutter and there's a black guy there. He's putting you to shame. You and your lady settle down for a nice game of marbles on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback. Fucking up your sucking flutters. <laughs> Gotta love those callbacks. 
All right, where the fuck? Oh, yeah. The rider slows down as he approaches, looking from side to side. But they see him very indistinctly. The bees and thorns and flowers and butterflies remain sharply focused while the rider is a wispy black shape beyond. The black shape snuffles, searching like a bloodhound. Frodo looks very tense and flushed. Now, they they think that they're just going to Disney World. (laughs) They don't have any inkling that they're in danger because the guy said so at the previously on. You remember the the guy that was me? Yeah. (laughs) So, why when they see a dust cloud of someone riding on the road toward them, are they like, we need to get in these thorny bushes now? Right, we don't... I mean, last time they saw a black rider, there was just no anything. Yeah, they're right. like Gandalf's just like, yeah, just go whatever. whatever. Like, oh, there's there's a black rider. You guys should go on vacation. Go oh, there. right now? Like, I don't even need at a daybreak after we've been at a fucking party all night. I don't even sure. I don't even need a bag. Fuck it, let's go. Oh, I'm a sure bl- a bag will just appear on me later when it's needed. Oh, there's a black rider outside. Yo, he's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Peace! And the Black Rider's just like, hmm. <laughs> though, though it was not addressed, they may think that Gandalf, being a powerful wizard, is like, you guys go, I'm gonna handle this. But he clearly did not. No, 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 no. Unless. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're gone. Now I can have a nap. Finally. <laughs> That's over. I'm gonna sleep by this hearth. Excuse me. <laughs> G unit. <laughs> G, G, G. We keep fucking you up in the middle of narration blocks. No, that was me. I interrupted myself. Oh, good, good, good. It wasn't you. Geth lit him. Okay. Uh, sniffles, searching like a blood. Frodo blood. looks very tense and flushed. He raises his hand to where the ring hangs at his chest. <laughs> he touches it. Fondles it. Uh, yeah, he does. A get me. bee uh. sucking at a dog rose next to it. Frodo's <laughs> hand appears. The ring poised over his finger. An effort of will shows on his face. And he draws the ring away. <laughs> so we have this real tense moment without ever setting up why it's tense. Why can't he just put the ring on? Don't know. They can sense There it. seemed to be... No consequences when he just did it in front of the scythe guys. And then jumped into a pile of shit. <laughs> you think yeah, I mean You think it, scythe guys burgers and fries would have done something about it, but This is starting to make me second guess why I hate the Thomas and Martha Wayne murder scenes in every fucking Batman movie. Like I wonder if that's the context that we're like, we're like But I mean then again, has anybody went to like a Batman movie like I wonder what happened to his parents? <laughs> You know what? <laughs> you have to think of movies as eternal things. Entry points as well, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But eternal things. You can't just assume everybody knows what Batman's deal is. Even the 1966 series had Adam West in the pilot episode go, I took on the mantle of the bat because my parents were murdered in front of me. Right. Yeah. Now yeah. let's never mention that again. Yeah. Because it really doesn't fit our theme. Yeah. Right. But, uh, yeah. Because I'm trying to take out what I know because I know a movie that was made like 40 years after this fucking yeah. thing was going to be made. So I'm like, oh, there's context here. Yeah, but there isn't. But if I take it out. And you just have I to think like happening. if someone watches a Batman movie that doesn't have Thomas and Martha Wayne being murdered. 70 years from now right when maybe dc has gone out of business because we see how they handle their movies oh you're right and they go back and they watch this movie they're like why is this guy dressed as a bat what the fuck is happening right. no that's that's true that's true. scythe guys burgers and fries what one, i'm saying uh, is one that, onion ring to rule them all what i'm saying is that for the first, <laughs> for the first i love time, your scythe guys burgers and fries that's just for awesome. the first time in my life a bad script is making me a better person it's only making you look, be a better person in relationship to your lack of knowledge of the fucking movie and the books. Well, my lack of knowledge for, like, because I'm, like, I'm somewhat of a comic book guy. It's so making like, you I'm a like, better person oh. by comparison. Yeah. Like, well, I'm like, yes, I would rather hang out with you than this script. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> but I look at, I look at, like, comic book movies, I'm like, oh, like, we all know, like, you come out of the, you come out of the womb knowing who fucking Spider-Man is. Like, that's my thought on it. But, like, maybe there's, like, a person that's sitting there, like, well, how do you, how do you get like that? It's like, because every, every year you have to learn the story of how Jesus died. 
and saved us from our sins. That's Jeff. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is a prelude to Superman. Uh, it, you know, I mean, the themes are very similar. 33 years old, laser eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> the, I, the, fortress of solitude yeah. the, the laser eyes part of the bible is is my favorite arguably the best he goes in with them lines and shit like, new yeah. before zod <laughs> snoochie boochies god yeah. is god yeah, you know you know he came around and he he resurrected laser eyes right right yeah you know yeah. wrong Let, laser eyes is the guy he brought back to life lazarus 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 <laughs> right like, yeah La- laser eyes. <laughs> That's how you pronounce that, right? Laser us is Lazarius. <laughs> the Black Rider. Sorry, we're we're, we're actually this script is so fucking bad. We're quoting the Bible. Like, we're, trying to, we're trying to fix the we're falling, Bible. We're falling way back, yeah, two thousand yeah. years back. Back to the the second <laughs> age. We're still in there. When, when Sauron. <laughs> rose to power. All these bees were sucking and bees fucking, and then Jesus came on out. That. A bee sucking at a dog rose. Yeah. Okay. I've seen this video. Okay, on, look. On this X- guy understands bees as much as he understands Lord of the Rings. Bees don't suck on flowers. That's not how that works. They fuck the flowers. Right. Yeah. They like dig all their booty in it. They're like, like boom. They basically rape flowers. That they, flower doesn't consent, bro. Yeah. I mean, the flowers are, I mean, they're, they're sex organs. Mm-hmm. I was in botany class one time. Wait, where are we? The Black Rider gallops <laughs> off. The hobbits show relief and start off again on their journey, but now keeping cautiously to the fields, even though they have no idea they're in danger. This is like if we you're... We don't want to run into that guy again. This is like you're driving to Six Flags, and you see a car, and you're like, we need to drive into the bushes. They're just... <laughs> no, they're just racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit, the black rider, hi. Like, roll the windows up. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> no. That's what they're doing. They're, they've got no reason to fear this man. That's true. He's got no reason to not put the fucking ring on. When when Mary and Pippin saw him in the Shire, they ran to to Bag End, which is never named, and they're like, look, okay, there's, a, there's a black guy. <laughs> oh, oh, God. In the Shire. <laughs> <laughs> and, We're a coven and, neighborhood. And Gandalf's like, well, a shadow is falling over the Shire. You guys should go on vacation until this passes. <laughs> I'll stay here and gentrify. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the black guy moved in. Y'all better leave. Here, take the gold ring. Yeah, yeah, take all your precious jewels. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. What the fuck is this shit? This movie's so racist. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior by a stream. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> a mossy bank by a stream. In the far background, a rough thatched cottage nestles into trees. The hobbits have made a fire, cooked and eaten. Each other. Sam is tidying up his pans. Ooh. Pippin is lying down in the water, idly trying to oh, tickle boy. trout. Oh boy. Frodo and Mary are stretched out in post prandial contentment. Dude, get the fuck off your okay, fucking Google. thesaurus shit. Okay, is prandial what the is same prandial? as coital? Here's the definition. <laughs> what does it say? Stop talking. Wait, why? <laughs> I wanted to what hear more. Yeah, yeah. I turned my mic, or I turned my headset up. I, I guess it must be uh, something to do with eating. They're They're happy that they're... They're full. During or related to dinner or lunch. Mm. Or second lunch. Or second formal, breakfast. Or formal, 11 C's. Humorous. Adjective. Post prandial content. Who, who the fuck writes that? Nobody besides the film crew would even see this. Yeah. Like nobody looks. It's like, <laughs> I've been In 1970, before. people just had better vocabulary. Who were they trying to impress with this shit? The architect was trying to impress his professional writer right. friend. He's like, oh, I'm going to look up post food. Um, thesaurus, 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 prandial. That'll fucking get him. Uh, how do I put tickling trout and something classy in the same paragraph? 
<laughs> a few belches. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, you're Mary. Yeah, you were Mary. Ah, oh, that's better. I feel more like a hobbit again. What did you feel like before? Well, Ooh. like a... Well, less like a hobbit. They all laugh at poor Mary, but they know what he means. <laughs> you dumb bitch. I don't know if this is a holiday or hard work. We've come so we come so far so fast. I think our hobbit sense got left behind. We squeezed a shy a month into a day. And my pack's too heavy. Even though we never got any. It's heavy. Uh, they seriously did not pack a bag. It's true. Gandalf said, you guys should go. And they said, oh, okay. Deuces. Let's do this. It's all packing a bag. It's all chuffa. They just got the bag. Whatever. Go on. I'm so upset. <laughs> then Pippin answers Fat Mary's complaint. Fat Mary? <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel the weight less, Mary, when you've walked off some of your own. Where is Rivendell, then? Tell me that, one of you. Some say it's here. Some say it's there. Does it move around, then? Why doesn't it stay in one place? Elves are very elfish. Never mind, Rivendell. Where are we? That's what I'd like to know. Well, i go no further tonight, for one. There is tacit agreement. Sam stands up and unrolls his bed blanket, looking out at the setting sun. When the sun's in the west, rest is the best. When the sun's in the east, start the feast. Mary mimes eating an enormous breakfast. Nom, 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 nom. Sam prepares Frodo's bed. Frodo is pensive, then something makes him shudder. A thought or an intuition. Those black riders. It's, this is not the right music. Meow, meow. This is post con <laughs> Prandial. Prandial. Those black riders. It's funny. When they've gone, it feels like they were never here. And when they're here, it feels like they'll never leave. And when they do go, you can't remember what they looked like. Frodo looks around nervously. The dell has fallen into twilight. Master, if you think about them too much, they'll never leave you. Think about, let's see, Gandalf's fireworks. You can see them if you close your eyes. They all follow Pippin's example and squeeze their eyes closed. And now they all sit, grinning and sighing. In a gentle reverie of remembered pleasure, the hobbits are far away in their beloved Shire again. This is rudely interrupted by the chilling sound of geese screaming. Their eyes open and they look around. A gust of wind swirls about them. The geese shriek, and a donkey in a nearby field begins to bray. Quickly, the hobbits gather up their belongings. It's a black rider. I can feel it. Sam picks up a stout stick and surveys the perimeter of their camp. <gasps> Suddenly, a flock of frightened crows go cawing overhead. Oh, oh. The braying donkey appears and crashes through their camp. Panic seizes the hobbits. Come on! Where? Anywhere. Am I Mary too? Yeah. You, you were Mary. I'm Sam. Oh, my bad. Anywhere! <laughs> you literally did Mary, and then one line down, you're like, I, I, who I was thought, Mary? I thought it was the third guy. They've been playing it like that, one, two, yeah. three, one, two, three. I expected it to be uh, Mary, Pip, and Sam. My bad. Anywhere! <laughs> <laughs> and off he runs with the others at his heels, and soon they are in full flight past the little farmyard. In the yard, a dog howls, and across their stumbling path appears a black cat, hissing. It's shackles high. Shackles? Huh? It says shackles. Hackles? Hackles? Must be hackles. Hackles. It must have been an autocorrect on his typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> they, run, yes. they run blindly on, caught by the terror at their heels, crying out themselves. Exterior, field, night. Over a moonlit plowed field, panic-stricken, the four hobbits fall and stumble. Horses and sheep run amok. Birds scatter from the trees. Frodo trips and falls to his knees, but Sam and... Oh, wait. From the trees, and the earth itself begins to resound with the beat of hooves. Frodo trips and falls to his knees, but Sam and Pippin drag him to his feet. Ahead is a dark, menacing forest. Exterior forest. Night. They, oh, God, I hope we get Tom Bombadil in this script. Who's that? He's the Bombadil. You'll find out, oh, I hope. Oh, boy. 
They plunge into its thickets, not daring to look back as the hooves beat closer. But the wood seems to open to let them pass, then close behind them as they zigzag through the branches and brambles. They're being chased by an alligator. <laughs> they risk a glance back and see the dark form of the Black Rider enmeshed in the dense undergrowth and the flash of a great scimitar cutting a way through. What? But the branches seem to fight back, thrashing at the horse. The hobbits run on, getting further and further away from the rider. They keep running deep into the forest until they can run no more. They come to a stop and struggle for breath. They look back, no sign of their pursuer. <sighs> Did you see the trees on the off side? Frodo looks around at the impenetrable forest surrounding them. Bilbo always said, there are good and bad trees, just as there are good and bad hobbits. Frodo has just finished talking when Pippin falls to the ground with a curse and jumps angrily to his feet again. That root tripped me up! Merry manages a snortling laugh. <laughs> Pippin, don't be ridiculous! Mary goes over to where Pippin stands and immediately crashes to the ground himself, falling over the same root. He leaps up again, clenches his fists at the tree, which owns the root. Don't try that stuff with me, I'll cut you down! The forest creaks and groans angrily in response. All these characters are fucking morons. They're just yeah. all so stupid. There are heroes. I hope the tree eats them. I hope there's like super character growth and they like march back into the Hobbit as or into the Shire as like heroes mm. like they did in the book. Like badasses. Like maybe they're actually setting them up as tomfoolery idiots and like, then yeah. fixes it. Yeah. But they, there's no direction though. I don't know what they're doing. Like they're just, they're guideless characters and I'm in a guideless world. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. They could encounter Yeah, anything. I mean, this is literally like Abbott and Costello meet Laurel and Hardy on the way to the Three Stooges. Right. It's just buffoonery. And there's no end to the. I don't know what the end is. I don't know why, when this stops. So do they know the answer to getting well, they're, rid of they're the They're going to get woods? to Rivendell, and then Elrond's really? going to be like, oh. Good, you're here safely. You've brought us the ring that we're going to explain now. What if what if this script never is, explains is what the ring is? 95% them getting to Rivendale. And once they get there, <laughs> <laughs> they get there they're like, oh yeah, we got the, the volcano. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and well, they, good thing we have these giant eagles. They'll just fly the ring down yeah, and drop like, it. What in. volcano? And he just walks out the door. He's like, that one. <laughs> It's just, just mostly like yucks. There. They're just idiots, like right. throwing turnips at each <laughs> other. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist! They 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 get past all the orcs by telling them they're just gonna play hide and seek, and that they need to count. <laughs> you should go to the tavern. The hard meats back on the menu. <laughs> Winks at camera. Uh, Sam laughs at Mary, but as he steps back, a swooping branch catches him in the back and sends him sprawling. Sam rises and bursts out in anger. You black-hearted tree! May Wormwood devour you! Woodworm. Woodworm! <laughs> devour you! I read Sa it as Wormwood, too. Sam wormwood. pulls out his axe, which he has, and, ah! and rushes at the tree, his uplifted arm brandishing it. Angry tremors run through the forest. A low branch knocks the axe out of Sam's hand. Sam is thrown off balance, spins around, and goes crashing into the tree. The trunk groans, the branches toss and quiver. Sam is frightened at the effect of his words. B big tree, forgive me, but please excuse me. I, I didn't mean it. All the plants in my garden love me. Frodo goes to Sam's side. He looks around anxiously at the restless tree. It's the Black Rider's fault. Sam is full of remorse. He talks in chokes. 
please, big tree. Don't fret. Go to sleep. Frodo looks on anxiously as Sam tries to placate the tree. We just read that. That just <laughs> fuck is this shit. <laughs> I wish I knew more about the language of trees, like Bilbo. <laughs> I want to know how to make the wood move. Drink water. Go to sleep, big tree. Frodo picks up Sam's cadence. Eat earth. Dig deep. Drink water. Go to sleep. <laughs> Look, Sam. The tree is quietening down. Eat, Eat earth, earth. Dig deep. deep drink drink water, water. Go, go to, to sleep. sleep. Sam and Frodo continue their chant, and Merry and Pippin join in, because that's not ridiculous. Perfect. Fuck, fuck. The anger of the tree subsides. The leaves begin to flutter softly. Merry and Pippin look up, and the hypnotic flutter of the leaves makes them drowsy. Look, the trees likes us. Yeah, did it. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. Oh, it's Come good. On, Frodo. <laughs> oh, sorry, I have a line. We should get off the ground with these black riders prowling about. Big tree, give us shelter for the night. Stop rhyming, you bitch. <laughs> the tree seems to respond <laughs> with a quiver, and Sam and Frodo notice Merry and Pippin staggering like drunks, fighting off sleep. Sam and Frodo feel the hypnotic effect of the fluttering leaves. Staggering, they manage to grasp Merry and Pippin and drag them to the tree. They help them up. The four hobbits climb into the tree. Sleep overtakes them. They sink into the thick, soft foliage, which seems to cradle them. As his eyes close, Frodo continues to chant. Wait, whose line is this? But it's then it's Sam's, Sam's line. line. That's Sam's line. <laughs> uh, eat earth, dig deep, drink water, go to sleep. Exterior, the big tree. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> it's a tad quit lying and go to sleep, bro. <laughs> Early morning sunlight dapples sleep. through the leaves. Sam shakes Frodo awake. Look, Master Frodo. Frodo sits up and squints out. We're right on the edge of the forest. I was sure we were deep in its heart. Pippin wakes up at that point. Well, trees can walk, can they? I wish they could cook. I'm starving. They look out at the open country road. It is broken and rocky with stunted trees. A mist hangs over it. Not at all pleasant. Well, we don't know where we are or where we're going. So we might as well start walking the way we're pointing. Exterior. Country. Foggy day. The hobbits walk in silence. Aimlessly in whatever direction they were facing when they woke up. Because that's what the heroes do. So boring. <laughs> the mist lies over, low over the ground, and visibility is getting worse. Sam is startled by something behind him. It's Marcus Aurelius Decimus. Take cover. It's a black rider again. <laughs> they all fall to the ground, finding <laughs> the shelter of some lichen-covered rocks. And I would like to formally, formally thank Kelly for correcting my pronunciation of the word lichen, which I had uh, not heard out loud until she told me how to pronounce it on this very show. Oh, what were you saying before? Lichen. 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 I only know that wrong. because of uh, David Attenborough watching nature shows. Of course. Oh, lichen. I, I only know everything because of David Attenborough. <laughs> The world you David Attenborough ta is taught me how to fuck. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? Like, <laughs> wow, that's fucking deep. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know this guy. Is he you don't Tom, know who David Attenborough is? Is he and Tom Bombadil together? <laughs> what the fuck? David Attenborough is have... the brother of the Jurassic Park guy. Yeah, Sam Neill. No, the other... <laughs> <laughs> Richard Attenborough was was uh, the guy that created Jurassic Park in the movie. Oh. You know, with his cane, with the... Yes, bad Welcome no spell. Oh, John to Hammond. Jurassic Park. John, John yeah. Hammond. John Hammond. John Hammond. Bad, no expense. That oh. actor's brother is David Attenborough. Oh. 
But he uh, does the narration on all those Planet Earth documentaries. Yeah, you oh. didn't have PBS in Alabama. Well, I was like, how do you get to the fuck? Like, Billy D. Williams didn't even teach me how to fuck. He taught me how to get laid, but I got to figure it out after that. <laughs> <laughs> So hand shoots first. Right, right. It, 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 it's like, hey, lady. And then they're like, oh, I'm going to suck these guys' dicks. <laughs> what, what is that? Wait, mean? wait. No, 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 no. Like, What are you doing? Don't, please don't touch that. Bad touch. Anyway, get back to how they're going to escape the Black Riders this time. Well, they hide in bushes the like bushes heroes. And they talk to the bushes just, very nicely. It's, it's just a... A never-ending series of hiding in bushes, waiting for... Is this guy just galloping in circles? Fucking no. This is lame. Does he have a bow? He could, like, shoot an arrow at these motherfuckers? Like, I'm glad I chose ass over this book. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, don't judge the for book yourself, on this man. I was getting laid and reading this book. The only thing, about, the only thing sexy about this book is that it is ass. <laughs> um... You Sam. were the black rider chasing the hobbits through I the was, bushes. I was like, fuck y'all, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to get puts. <laughs> Sam points. They watch anxiously and after a moment catch a glimpse of a horseman drifting ghost-like through the fog. He disappears and they wait, straining to pierce the fog with their eyes. Again, the rider appears fleetingly, this time much closer. Quick and quiet. Mm. He leads the way and they set off at a crawling run away from the rider. They can hear the hooves quite distinctly behind them. They begin to imagine riders everywhere. They quicken their pace, fear verging once again on panic. Sam collides with a boulder and the frying pan on his pack makes a clanging ring. In response, a deep voice calls out from behind them. Me? Sure, you got a deep voice. Do, do the Nazgul voice. Oh. Halflings is. Hobbits is. That's Actually, cool. Josh, can you can you oh, read that again? Read him in. Halflings is hobbits is. Oh, it seems to say. <laughs> the hobbits look at each other in alarm. Halflings, he can hear us moving. We must hide. With disgust. Halflings. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what that's about. But. Athletes, he can hear us moving. <laughs> we must hide. <laughs> Athletes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not even afraid of the Black Rider anymore. Like you, fucking floral now, bitch. <laughs> they push on, running hard, keeping low. The sound of hooves is close behind, and again the voice is calling. Hobbit says. The hobbits scuttle away, zigzagging among the boulders. Suddenly, they catch a glimpse through the drifting fog of three black riders emerging from behind a knoll and fanning out, making the familiar sniffing, sniffling sounds as if they are following a scent. The hobbits freeze on the spot. Then, carefully, they backtrack, tiptoeing through the boulders in silence and fear, not knowing what to do. They hear a horse galloping toward them. They bolt away. The horse jumps a rock, coming to a, re- a rearing halt in front of the terrified hobbits. The rider leaps to the ground. He is a towering figure with a long, leathery face and keen blue eyes. Sam, showing great bravery, showing great bravery, draws his long kitchen knife and trembling struts up to the man. What happened to the axe? <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Black Rider, I'm Sam G- Gamgee. Yes, Gamgee. Gam- I'm Sam Gamgee, Hobbit of the Shire. Turn and fight, and fight fair if you know how. Sam trembles, his teeth chatter. A slight smile touches the lips of the man and softens the melancholy of his deep-lined face. He regards the four hobbits. Which of you is Frodo? The hobbits are stunned that the man should know Frodo's name. They exchange looks. The snuffling sounds are heard again. I am. That's good, guys. The man turns to Frodo, the only hobbit who has not spoken. Do you bear it? Bear it? Bear what? I see you do. It draws them. 
Who are you? Why have you pursued us if you are not a black rider? No question mark. I am a ranger. Oh, are we not supposed to be camping here without a permit or... Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. You guys need to put your your food. I see you guys carrying around a lot of food. You should put it in a barrel and hang it from a tree pretty far from your camp. He signals that they be still. They listen. Snuffling sounds again approach from all sides. He casts a commanding glance at the hobbits and motions that they follow him. The hobbits obey, running after the ranger. Why are we going with him? What else can we do? I don't like the look of him. The shrill hoofbeats of the black riders are pursuing them and seem about to engulf them. The hobbits are unable to maintain the ranger's pace. He sees this, glancing back, and realizes that further flight is hopeless. He stops, holding up one hand. Stand and fight! For a moment, the hobbits believe that he means with him. It is open plain, and they are very vulnerable. The fog drifts about them. The ranger crosses his arms and draws two swords. Oh, shit! They are... They are the two broken halves of one sword. How do you what? draw the broken half? What are you going to oh. do with your broke-ass swords? <laughs> I guess he... No. So in the book, he carries the shards of Narsil with him at all times, and that's his only weapon. But it's basically just like the hilt and a little bit of blade, and the rest is just like loose bits in the thing. Because that's the sword that broke... Defeating Sauron and cutting the ring off his hand. Why didn't he just get another sword? Because it's in the fucking- movie he does, and the shards of Narsil are in Rivendell uh, until the third movie, and they reforge it. In the books, he carries it with him because he is the heir of Isildur and the rightful king of Gondor, and the sword is his birthright. Yeah, yeah. well, it's just a knife. It's not a sword anymore. Yeah, but it's badass. Is it? It's yeah. the you sword. Up, like, fight me, bitch. You got a little dagger? I'm like, okay, I win. All right, all right, look. If you had a sword or a, a knife, say. Yeah. Say, if you had a knife that you knew for a fact SEAL Team 6 had cut Osama bin Laden's throat with, but it broke, you'd be like, time to get a new knife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would go somewhere. Nice. I'd be like, ah, like it belongs in a museum. Like, just <laughs> leave it there, and I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna get a gun. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the wall right next to my uh, my Thor's hammer, or sell it for a real boy sword. Like that I can actually <laughs> fucking use. It's not gonna get me killed. Ching. Uh, An inheritance doesn't mean shit unless you live long enough to enjoy it. One hand brandishes the original handle, while the other grasps a makeshift handle of leather bound around the blade. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder, make a ring. He duct taped it together. <laughs> <laughs> he made a shank out of I'm it. I'm a really you. <laughs> See, good as ever. And it's like leaning, like it's all cockeyed and shit. The ranger and the tiny hobbits form a cr- little circle, their cutlery pointing out into the fog. Immediately, two riders burst upon them. One has a scimitar which scythes the air. And the other... B- that sword's so sharp it cut through the air. It cut the air. I can't breathe. <laughs> 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 and the other bears a long lance. The ranger drops to his knee to avoid the blade and swings his swords in an arc over his head. Swords. The Rip. two black horses lurch away. The hobbits throw themselves to the ground and the ranger's horses above them, giving some protection. From another direction, a black rider charges and the ranger's horse rears at the oncomer, who swerves away. The ranger drags their the hobbits to their feet. Get up, halflings! Protect your master! He pulls Frodo to his feet, but when he releases him, Frodo sinks to his knees again. Frodo is half swooning. Oh, this range is so dreamy. His hand goes to the ring, his eyes glaze. The black riders charge once again, 
the ranger thrusts out his two swords toward the sound of the hooves. Uh, Frodo moans as they gallop together, charging in. The ring! Precious! The leading horse catches the ranger with its flank and hurls him to the ground. He crashes into the hobbits. The ranger's horse rears up, causing one rider to swerve away. A scimitar slices across their heads, and a lance stabs the ground an inch from Frodo's leg. Frodo crawls away into the fog. He has the ring out now. The other hobbits stagger to their feet. Sam sees that Frodo has gone. He calls out, Master! Master Frodo! The riders charge again. Frodo can bear it no longer. His face is agonized. He slips on the ring. The riders charge past between Frodo and the others. Sam catches a glimpse of Frodo just before the horses obscure his view. When they are gone, Frodo has disappeared. They've taken him! As Frodo becomes invisible, his perception changes. The fog disappears. His vision becomes extremely vivid. He sees the black riders as they slow and slow down and turn, ready to attack again. The ranger and the hobbits point their weapons out pathetically into the fog, which no longer exists for Frodo. The world of sound has changed too. He cannot hear the hoofbeats, nor what the ranger and Sam are calling out. Instead, he is assailed by a dense, crashing clamor of voices. All nine riders turn. Mm. Clearly, they now sense the area of his presence. They charge at him in a phalanx. They seem to come very slowly, swerving and lurching as they draw in. Inexorably closer, they grow larger. They ride on towards Frodo, ignoring the ranger and the hobbits. They are now twice, three times normal size. They rein in their horses above Frodo, and each one extends a black gloved fist toward him. On each hand gleams a garish ring. Nine hands and rings come down toward him, and a voice chants above all the others. Who's going to read that one? I can do it. Nine rings for the mortal men doomed to die. A lance is raised, descending slowly towards Frodo. Frodo sees the blind, luminescent skull-like faces. The wall of voices seems to crush him down. Subtle, seductive voices, voices screaming in pain, voices singing strange plaintive songs and chants, children wailing. And through them all, another voice booms, struggling to be heard, trying to warn Frodo. Gandalf! Gandalf! The rider's movements have become slower and slower until the moment that the lance descends on Frodo becomes utterly suspended. The riders stand above Frodo, frozen in time, as Frodo struggles in the dimension of sound, trying to hear what Gandalf is saying. The sharp, evil lance point, the moment of, of his death, is poised above him. Over me, the ring would gain a power still greater, more deadly. The other voices scream down Gandalf's voice. Frodo tears the ring off his finger. The moment of suspected time is released. Suspended time, that makes more sense, is released. The voices ease. The lance plunges down at him. Frodo rolls away from it, but not far enough, and its point pierces his shoulder. The fog returns. Sam spots Frodo and cries out. There, Frodo! The others see him too and catch a glimpse of lances and scimitars, blindly stabbing and probing the earth about Frodo's crumpled body, ah. desperately searching for Frodo, who is now quite visible. The ranger swings his swords and runs to Frodo's aid, but the riders have gone, disappearing into the fog. The ranger lifts Frodo into his arms. Blood seeps from his wound, and Frodo is barely conscious. The ranger considers for a moment, peering into the fog, then down at the anxious faces of the terrified hobbits. The ranger galvanizes into action. He sits Frodo on his horse and then bundles the other hobbits up behind him. Hold on for your life and his. Sam puts out his arm around Frodo and the ranger breathes a word into the horse's ear. 
The river. The horse snorts. The ranger gives it a mighty slap on the rear, mm. and it gallops off. Be faster than a sinking hope. What the fuck is what that? What the fuck? Line? That's a terrible line. That's a poetic a ass terrible, fucking horse. Terrible line. The four. <laughs> the, the horse bolts away. The four <laughs> hobbits hanging on precariously. Table reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash ferriswheelhouse2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to Table Reads. So, here we are. And here this script is happening still. My my hope is sinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fast my horse goes. <laughs> Faster than a sinking hope. Our break uh, did run late in the show because this scene was so long. It was not faster than a sinking hope. No, it was much oh, longer. Oh, that was that. okay. That was okay. <laughs> that line is terrible. It's pretty brutal. And just this introduction of... Strider, the Ranger, Aragorn. Uh, spoilers. Um, Are those three people or one person? That's one person. Shit. He has a lot of names. Strider's cool. You keep going. Strider is his Ranger name that he goes by, but he's really uh, Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Uh, King Elisar, the rightful heir of Gondor, the heir of uh-huh. of. Isildur, um, etc. But um, <laughs> can't just, hear like, you. Still getting pooned. Why stop? <laughs> I'm still smashing puss. <laughs> Keep fuck? reading me about this dude's lineage, and I'm just, <laughs> just upstairs. You know, we talk about Batman, and he'll fucking you know. He'll, yeah, well, let's do a Batman script. Next. We should. I have so many. We Batman should. He'll be scripts. so mad about it. He'll be so mad about it. It'll be really fun. Right, but I got the smash push while I read Batman. <laughs> that shit was cool, dude. She's like, "Oh, I know Batman. This I shit is like, cool. You eat a dick. Whatever. I wasn't. I wasn't getting chicken. <laughs> hey, baby, let's go down Crime Alley. I was like, I was like, no, no, no. I was like, look, I was like, check it out, Batman. Like, and I got into the psychology of it. I wasn't like getting her, but like, check it out. I'm gonna fuck you, like, Etrigan, son of Etrigan. <laughs> 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 Like, you know, a third of his name. Like, he's got a sword. How long is it from this big? <laughs> this, this is lame. <laughs> Yo, I'm, let's go down Crime Alley. I'm going to put some bullets in your ovaries. Mm, maybe I'm about that. to. I'm about to break your pearl Thomas necklace. and Martha ovary. <laughs> the best thing about tonight is I'm going to get you hobbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Which you said is a thing. Yikes. Fade in. <laughs> Exterior, valley and river. I just, I, I know when to give up. I like playing this character of a guy that hates Lord of the Rings. This is like really fun. <laughs> Exterior, valley and river. Day. The ranger's horse breaks out of the fog and into a valley at the bottom of which runs a river. Oh, okay, That's this a- is what I wanted to say about, about the introduction of Aragorn here is they don't have any reason to trust him he doesn't say who he is he says what his job is like and it's not even cop who turns up and is like I'm an elevator repair man follow me and you're just like all right I trust this guy Gandalf <laughs> he's already done it he was like go to Rivendell bitch and they're like yes sir but they <laughs> knew like, him look, 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 look. did this they is- where's that established when there's a G in the sky and everybody starts shouting his name and then he turns up and they're That's, not like... You know that guy? Like, like I fucking know Lady Gaga when her name's on a sign. I'm like, uh. Yeah, and if like, Lady Gaga was 
told you to go somewhere, you'd be like, all right, all right. Just chased no, no, by, I wouldn't. By some randos. Like, She's like, take this ring and go to the town. <laughs> Dude, we just made a way better movie. I want to see this movie. Like, we are stuck in out, like, Las Vegas and right. running. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Lady, Gaga shows, <laughs> Lady Gaga shows up with some fireworks and is like, take this jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> but she's doing it all straight face like she's walking around the room like that ring on the table. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> put it on. Don't you want to put it no, on? No, no, no. Don't put it on. What is this no, lady thinking? On. I don't know. I can't read her poker face. Lady, <laughs> lady Gaga. Damn. Is that a fancy baby? <laughs> po- poker face. My The fa- the fanciest baby. My joke, guys. My no, joke. I got you, Jay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledge my jokes. Still smashing puss. <laughs> uh, um, the fame monster is a better idea for this fucking movie. <laughs> Roma, ma, ma. The ranger's horse breaks out of the fog and into a valley at the bottom of which runs a river. Just On the, the slopes the around them, <laughs> they now see the black riders trailing whiffs of dust, converging on the hobbits from all directions. These fucking black riders are still happening. They are racing the hobbits to the river. Sam has difficulty in keeping Frodo's dead weight from fall falling. Failing. It looks like failing, it but it's, failing. it's yeah. just a little bad Xerox thing from falling. The wind sweeps the blood from Fro- Frodo's wound back onto him. It froths and darkens. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. How are they going to show that? Sam sees the river ahead. How are they going to show how would they any have, of this? How would they have filmed wind sweeping blood back onto him and frothing and getting better like in 70s shit? Like, or the fan. They would, you think they would zoom in on such an intricate <laughs> detail? Like, uh, no, they'd rejected the script, Jeff. That's why we're reading think it. think that was it? <laughs> <laughs> Put me in my place. Okay, so, little backstory. Uh, According to John Borman, this was a period where like optical and practical special effects had really fallen into disuse. People just like were like, well, we had Melier in the 30s and we just really don't care about special effects forever after that until Lucas comes along seven years after this. So he says that he like came up with all kinds of new methods and technologies to do the special effects for this movie. He devised them himself and eventually used them in Excalibur and Zardoz. But what, what are you saying? he I, also I, said, I he also said, I wrote a good script. So we can't trust that man. He is uh, an unreliable narrator. <laughs> 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 History will never remember his lying words. <laughs> he did direct Deliverance. Paddle faster. Whoa, Jeff hasn't seen Deliverance. Look no, at his I, face. no, I've seen it. I'm just trying to remember if there was, like, there was character development in that movie. <laughs> I was trying to, like, really. Yeah. I'm going to see he change. He changed a lot. Yeah, there's lots of character development. You're like, it, wait, they're like, it, just what, chilled out bros, like, oh, this is fun. Was and then, Deliverance based on a book? Or did he, was that an original idea? Um, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be interested to see if this guy went from, like, Maybe he's just a shitty adapter, but like when he's trying to form his own story, he's like, oh, I better put that in there. I better put all it, like the banjo scene and shit like that. Like there was like character development for the movie and fucking started, but now everybody just remembers it for. The Black Rider appears. I'm Nine sorry, Black everybody. Riders appear. Oh, yeah. Frost and Darkens is where we were. Sam sees the river ahead and the nine black riders converging from all sides. Some from the left, (laughs) some from the right, some from behind. We know what sides are. Oh, boy. Two-step. They all froth and darken as well. (laughs) Mary turns and sees a black rider catching up. He waves the frying pan to ward off the rider. Ah! The light flashes off of the pan. And for a moment, blinds the rider's force. Fuck you. Fuck that. It wavers and loses its stride. On the other side of the placid river, behind great trees, a light glows, and Sam catches a glimpse of a palace crystal. Rivendell. 
Approaching the river, the ranger's horse slows down, while the riders drive their horses on. The ranger's horse starts to wade across. Converging from all directions, the black riders come galloping up to the river, almost colliding into each other, like a bunch of derps. <clears throat> there is a confusion of rearing black horses, then the riders drive their mounts into the water. Deep, inhuman cries come from the riders, chilling the blood of the hobbits. What, how do you read this individually? The ring. The ring. Suddenly, a wave of water floods the river, as if materializing out of the spray. Mounted elven warriors on ponies. Yeah! The color of foam, their manes and tails flying like the surf about them, <laughs> gallop down the center of the river. They charge into the black riders, jousting them into the water. Ah! Jousting them into the water. I've <laughs> never seen, like, that, that used that way. Like, I'm gonna joust you... We've won the competition this day. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> All except one who had not yet entered the river. Frodo falls into the water. Sam plunges after him. An elf jumps down, laughing with joy and pulls Frodo out. Merry and Pippin scramble toward the bank. The elven horsemen, their ponies prancing, Break into cheers of victory. They did huzzah. Huzzah! 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 Sam, Mary, and Pippin, barely able to stand up in the fast-running water, look around in amazement. The bodies of the Black Riders are dissolving in the water, and from the dissolving carcasses issues a black slime. They did it! Yeah, they did. They, we beat them! We won! That's how you beat the Nazgul. You just give them a bath. We, yeah. They lost uh, in a jousting contest. So... That doesn't make any sense. What the fuck is the rest of the script about? We who, just beat them. Who are they going to fight in Rohan? Yeah, where, like, they... Who are the Rohirrim going to fight? It doesn't matter, nerds. Let's get the fucking ring to wherever it's supposed to be going. <laughs> to do whatever we're supposed to be doing. We've got 140 pages left. But they so. just beat the bad guys. <laughs> they just beat the bad guys. I'm going to start drinking uh, bad, like... <laughs> Be good. I'm I blew shots. my load on the first episode. Yeah, I yeah, like, three, uh, beer, three beers earlier. Hangover now. now. I'm like mm. howling, I'm swords shots. in hand. The ranger is running at incredible speed toward the river. The surviving black rider turns his horse and rears it up against the ranger, who crashes into the underside of the horse, toppling it over into the river. Holy shit! The elves cheer uh, again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Black Rider dissolves into a slimy rivulet of dark liquid which flows downstream, intact, running snake-like between the rocks. <laughs> and snake-like, the liquid remains of the Black Riders coil and wind into each other. Are they going to turn into, like, one massive Black Rider? I... They become Venom. I thought it was over when they cheered, and then they fought another one, and then they cheered again. <laughs> like, yeah! Oh, let's fuck that guy! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, shit, we missed one! <laughs> ah! Joust, bitch! <laughs> Welcome to Riverdale, bitch! <laughs> we just... <laughs> The fucking people they're saving are just like drowning in the fucking water and they're just, they're just like, laughing, ah! cheering. Bunch of jocks and shit. I dig these guys. <laughs> so then they're going to go to Rivendell. They're the alphas. Fade out. We, we got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. <clears throat> so they got to Rivendell. Two episodes in. <laughs> this shit sucks. Man, this shit sucks, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I, it's gonna take us forever because we gotta like. So part of the show is making it entertaining. What we're reading. Okay, right? look, you guys are just clearly really not very clear on the the Tolkien mythos. You're right. Everybody knows the Nazgul are made of cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> They're great for thickening my uh, Mugu guy pan. Right, they're uh, they're basically 
um, that, uh, that stuff that the gastro, uh, mm. scientists make, uh, a- a- agate, what, what is it? Uh, uh, I fucked it up. Lactithin? Lactithin? It's for emulsifying eggs. When you edit this, just put the right thing in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Sean, how did you know that? No, I've never heard of that thing Look, you just said. Yeah, what we, is that we really have, esoteric thing you're thinking about? We have a an important connection with our listeners. They need to know the real me, including when I'm a fucking moron. No. But you're not... you. You knew a thing existed and didn't know the name. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about to even get to forgetting the name of it. <laughs> so, too busy, too busy banging poon. I'm talking hard. <laughs> Look, you just watch 14 seasons of of Top Chef and you'll figure it out. Oh, oh, MSG. <laughs> Uh, just, that's just the list. No, the it's like they make they make like balls of liquids that you can pop in your mouth. And it's the stuff that makes the membrane. Now I'm super like the shit in boba, uh, like boba tea, like boba tea shit. The, no, the tapioca like, shit. Uh, you know what? He's totally gonna edit this. We'll tell everybody on the next episode, hey. or they'll tell us on Twitter at the table reads. If you tell us what the hell we're talking about, I'll send you a pair of my socks. <laughs> we'll read your tweet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're on Twitter at the table reads on Instagram at the table reads uh, on Facebook at facebook.com slash table reads. Josh, what do you got? I got an email address M E at Joshua J Baker.com. If you want me to send you a pair of my socks, just send me an email. And what if they wanted to, <laughs> I also do video and some voiceover work as well. Great. If you guys are interested in that. <laughs> totally forgot to do all this last episode because I was so focused on our new Patreon <gasps> that people can sign up for to get early access to all our episodes with no fucking ads, by the way. You definitely yeah. want that. No ads. Our live stream when we get it to work, where we you get to watch us record live on video two months before the episode comes out. We're gorgeous. You can't fucking beat that. That's before we even do it. We're like a 12 if you add all of our numbers together. Exactly. And, you know, Jeff will show you his lactation trick. (laughs) Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming hard. I plan on getting pretty sloshed the rest of the script so it starts making sense. (laughs) Anything can... I'm telling you, get on that Patreon. (laughs) Lord of the Tito's. It's just gonna be dope. So I've got uh, the Lord of the Rings right here, actually. It lives right here in the studio. I think between now and next week, I'm just going to paste all the pages all over the walls. It's a great idea. You know what? All right. I got another I got another incentive for people to respond. Respond to this episode what you would name your busted ass sword. And that's what we'll start calling the one that the busted ass guy has <laughs> in our script. Best name wins. <laughs> Best name Fair. of a busted ass sword. Also, I forgot uh, to tell people where to find that Patreon. It's patreon.com slash table reads. You probably could have guessed it, but now you don't have to. So next week, we'll be back for part three of this Lord of the Rings thing. Um, <laughs> table it. Maybe Kelly will be with us. Maybe not. Um, either way, until then... We will miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black.